Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you guys want to check them out. Today is day 12 and the final day of our 12 Days of Christmas tutorials. I am so excited to share this one with you and I have been so happy to share these 12 tutorials with you guys and I hope y'all have loved them all as well. Today we are doing a fun glittered and hand painted floral tray. I picked up this tray for $5 at Target a few weeks ago. They may still have them. These were just in the dollar spot. If you don't find them at Target, I'm sure that you can find something similar at Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Big Lots, or other stores like that. They usually have little things like this that you can customize and make pretty. Don't forget that all of my 12 Days of Christmas tutorials has a giveaway associated with it. You can find all the details in my tutorial group, but for now we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys didn't know, I will be teaching a two-day class at next year's TumblrCon. If you guys are interested in going, I do have a link to tickets in the description as well as a discount code. I cannot wait to meet you guys in person and I hope to see you there. Alright guys, so this is the tray that we're going to start with. This is just a $5 tray that I got from Target's Dollar Spot. This has been sitting in my glitter covered office for a few weeks. So we are going to take some alcohol and just clean off any glitter or anything that could be on the tray. And we are going to be using UV resin to attach our glitter. I am using Sparkling Sage Glitter. You can get this at thedrunkflamingo.com. It's a really pretty light champagne gold. And I am just going to be using a paintbrush to kind of spread my UV resin around. We don't need a thick coat. We are just spreading it to the edges just to get this board tacky. And I also want to point out that this board from Target did not have any type of sheen or anything like that on it. If it did have a sheen or a finished surface, I would have sanded it first but this was just straight wood. It was already slightly rough. So I did not see a need to sand it. Of course, if you feel more comfortable sanding, you can definitely do that. And once I get the surface completely covered with the UV resin, I am going to set my paintbrush to the side. I am going to cover it with a paper towel so that when the UV light hits the board, it's not going to hit the paintbrush and cause the resin to cure on the brush. So I'm just taking my tea strainer and sprinkling on this glitter. And this way, all of my glitter is kind of getting dispersed in a thin layer and not super thick. And tea strainers you can find on Amazon. The one that I like the best, which I think is downstairs at the moment, I got from Walmart years ago on an end cap. I don't even think that they have it anymore. So I am just sprinkling this glitter all over the board. 
and I am kind of looking to see where the wet spots are. And wherever there are wet or slick spots, that means that the UV resin has really soaked up that glitter. So I'm just going back and adding a little bit more glitter to those particular spots. And then I am just kind of banging off the excess And then we're going to take our UV light and cure the entire tray. So I will either take my tray outside and sit it in the sun, or I will hold the UV light over each section for about two minutes. And when the board does not feel tacky anymore, then I know my resin is cured. And then I'm going to go back with another layer of UV resin. Obviously, if you want to use regular epoxy, you can do that as well. I was just in a little bit of a time crunch when I was working on this tray. And I thought, let me just see if UV resin will work. And it actually worked really well. I know a lot of people use UV resin to attach glitter to their tumblers for the first layer. So I figured that it would work for this tray as well. Now our final layer is going to be regular FDA compliant epoxy so that anything that any food touches will be FDA compliant. This will all be sealed in with regular epoxy so don't worry about that. So I am just smoothing all these sections. I am making sure that the UV resin is covered around the handle parts. And we're just dragging it to the edge, but not over the edge. Then I am going to cover my paintbrush again I did actually look to see if there were any spots that I missed. I kind of get eye level with the tray and look for any spots that may not be covered. And then I will go back and add more resin if needed. And kind of let it self level. And when everything is leveled out, we're going to hit it with our UV light again and let it cure. I did a fairly thick coat. If you feel like you need to sand and add another coat of resin before you paint, you can do that. Once you have a flat surface to work with, we're going to start painting. I'm using blush, petal pink, autumn rose, white, French silk, succulent, and sage and a little bit of cinnamon donut. I have all my colors already in my color palette, my painting palette. And the last tutorial I did, we painted red poinsettias. And when I was doing that cup, I could not decide if I wanted to do red or pink. I ended up sticking with red which I liked, but I still wanted to do some pink ones. So that is what we're going to do today. So I am mixing a little bit of blush and white. And when you're painting around these handles, it can be a little tricky. And I am just starting in the corner. I kind of had a vision that I wanted my poinsettias kind of coming in 
from opposite corners. So for this flower, we are just kind of getting a few petals And if you do not have color fix paints, you can definitely use acrylic paints. I just really like color fix paints, not only because they are a paint primer and glitter glue built in, but they are very smooth paints and I like how they blend together. So for my pink flowers, I am starting with a blush and white mixture. Then we're going in with a darker pink, which is the petal pink. And then the smallest interior flowers are going to be more white. This is just the corner one, so it is kind of hard to see my vision right now. And then I am taking succulent and we are just making a little leaf in the corner. Y'all will get to see how I do my other one a little better when it's the full flower. So I'm going to start my second flower, which is going to be the first full one. And this will still be in real time so you guys can really kind of see how I create them. I know so many of y'all say that y'all can't do this. Y'all cannot hand paint. But it is so simple. It is literally the same shape duplicated multiple times. That is pretty much all it is. So we are just drawing these little petals in a circle shape. And they're basically just elongated teardrops. You can play and manipulate the point a little bit if you want to, just so each petal has a little different shape. And once we have our larger petals complete, we're going to go in with our darker pink. And we're going to do our second layer, which you guys can see is the same shape, just a little bit smaller. And 
and we're going to make those petals a little closer together. And in my previous video, I also mentioned that if you guys are not confident just freehanding like this, you can always practice on a sheet of paper first, just to kind of practice those shapes and to get down your layout. And right now I'm just going back through the first layer that we did and just adding some highlights in different shades to those petals. I should have done that before I did the second layer, but I forgot. <laughs> So now I'm doing the same thing to the second layer. I'm just going in with some lighter and darker shades just to break up that color a little bit so they don't look so solid. We're still keeping that same shape. We're just doing different colors. And now I'm going in with white and we're just making those same teardrop shapes, just even smaller. And we're just painting these shapes all the way around until we get back to the beginning. And now we're going to take the end of our paintbrush and we're just going to dot a little bit of that cinnamon donut color. This is what we did for our red poinsettias as well. And then we're going to make our little leaf So now I'm just going to speed this up a little bit so you guys can still watch how I paint my flowers, how I overlap them and layer them, but on a little bit faster scale. But for all of my flowers, I pretty much start out the same way. We're starting with our light pink and white mixture then we will move into our medium pink and they are just the same shape. Still around these handles can be tricky.
and I am not cleaning my brush in between colors just because I like the way that the petals look when all of the colors are kind of blended together. There's a little bit of each color in the petals, which I like. If you want more of a defined look from color to color, then you can always clean your brush in between paint colors. And I did decide to add these little kind of wispy, white, feathered looking vines. I did see one of Emily Breed's cups that she did. And she had these fun little white feathers on her hand-painted cups. If you guys do not know Emily Breed, she is the owner of Rustic Passions Studio. She also does amazing hand-painted tumblers. If y'all do not follow her, y'all should definitely go follow her. And I started with a base layer of these little white wispies. It's very light, so you can't really see them right now. But I just wanted kind of a guide of where I was going to go back with my paint pens and really kind of detail them. So I just did a very faint little guide, I guess, with my paintbrush. So for this corner, we're pretty much doing the same thing. I am changing it just slightly. I started this flower a little bit more into the tray than the opposite corner. I wanted them to be fairly similar, but just a little different. And I think I forgot to mention that if y'all have not tried Colorfix paints, they are from Artistry. And we do have a discount code down below for them. These are great for using on tumblers if you want a base coat and glitter in one step. Since these do have a glitter glue built in. So we are just going to work on this until you have your flowers looking how you want. 
just adding a little bit more color until you get the color in your petals that you want. And once you are happy with how your flowers are looking, we are going to let these dry for a little bit, and then we are going to come back and detail these with some gold accents. So this is the gold that I'm going to be using today. It's just a liquid antique gold. I would typically use my gold leafing pins, but they are all dried up. I really just need to order some more, but I keep forgetting. And I'm just taking a tiny paintbrush and detailing some of the leaves and petals with this gold. This antique gold is my favorite color to use because it's not really yellow. It's more of a, it's not necessarily a rosy gold, but it's just it's just an antique gold. It's not yellow gold. It's not pink gold. It's just gold. <laughs> and when you get this, you do have to shake it up really, really well before you use it because the gold and whatever makes it liquid, I don't even know. It does separate. I typically just pick mine up at craft stores it will be in the leafing section, but you can order it from Amazon as well. And I will clean my brush with acetone or alcohol when I'm finished. Regular water will not clean it up because this is oil-based. And once we are done applying our gold, we are going to take our extra fine point Posca paint marker and we're going to detail and outline the flowers. But for some reason, my video cut out right when I was starting to do this. So I am going to link a video now for my poinsettia tumbler so you guys can see how I outline the flowers. So I'm just showing you guys kind of where I outlined where I applied the white, so you guys can see. My iPad storage was full, so it cut out my video. So now we are going to use this same liquid gold, and I am just going to paint around the edges because I just really liked that gold look. I thought it would look cool around the edges. So I am just getting my little paintbrush and painting the edges of our board. I am being really careful when I get to the edges. I don't want to overlap the flowers. And once this liquid gold dries, we are going to epoxy over our entire board. We are using regular Artistry Epoxy Fast Set. I am mixing equal parts of A and B. I don't typically measure in ounces or milliliters. I should, I know, but most of the time I just guess. Um, these are five ounce cups that I am using and I filled them up probably about a third of the way. So I would say maybe three ounces of epoxy is probably how much I use, three or four ounces of epoxy. And before I epoxied, I did get these awesome little logo tags from Mizzy's Doodles. I will link her below if you guys want to check them out. And I decided to add one to my cutting board. I just attached it with a tiny amount of Gorilla Gel Super Glue. 
just to hold it in place so that I could epoxy over it. And I am just starting by pouring a little bit of this epoxy right down the center of my board. And we are just going to spread it with our popsicle stick just to thin it out a little bit. I am focusing my pores in the center of the tray because you don't want to pour too much close to the edge and then have a huge spill and waste epoxy and have it all over the edge. We don't want to do that. And don't come for me for wiping that epoxy with my finger. I had to get it off. And again, I am just being careful when I pour this epoxy around the little handles. So I am just kind of smoothing out the center first, and then I am working under the handles. I'm pouring a little bit on each side. So I am just kind of smoothing this out. Now I am going to get my glove and I'm just going to bring this epoxy to the edge with my gloved finger. I am just bringing it right up to the edge. I am not pulling it over the edge because I don't want it to waterfall over. I just want it to kind of sit right next to the edge. And since we did put some gold along the sides of this tray, I am going to go back with my gloved finger and just run some epoxy right along that edge, just enough to cover it. It's not going to drip down or anything like that. So I'm just carefully kind of smoothing everything out making sure the surface is level. And since we are using fast set, this is slightly starting to get a little thick. It's not super watery. Artistry's fast set is already a thicker formula. So right now I am able just to apply a little bit of this epoxy on the side and just smooth it out with my finger. Just so the sides have a slick, shiny finish like the rest of the tray. So I'm just applying a little bit of this epoxy on the side. And then I'm going back with my gloved finger and just smoothing it all out. And once we do our last side, I'm going to take my torch and we're going to pop all of those bubbles. I would watch this for the first 30 minutes to an hour. If you're using regular epoxy, I would watch it for a little bit longer just to make sure that no epoxy starts to drip off the edge. I did not have a problem with this tray. I did not have to wipe anything off the edges. Nothing was dripping off, but it can happen. So I would just be mindful of that if you're doing a tray that is elevated. We don't want those drips to harden mid-drip on our tray. It's the same as doing countertops.
So I am just smoothing out those sides one last time. Then we're going to grab our torch and pop those bubbles. And once this layer of epoxy is cured, you are ready to go. I would wait three days before you use it, which is the cure time for most epoxies. But this epoxy is FDA compliant. So if you want to use it for cheese, light food contact, this epoxy would be okay for that. Here are some finished pictures of this tray. I love how it turned out. I love the pink paint against the sparkling sage glitter. I love pinks and rose golds together. All right, guys, well, this is the final tutorial of our 12 Days of Christmas. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this series, and I wish you all a Merry Christmas. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group or my damn fancy tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!